ain't got one. <laughs> yes, you do. No, there you go. <laughs> All right. And the one that knows that I was there, in there. Simple, 
And then I had heard an old saying that no good actor dies quickly. And so <laughs> the, the, the end of my time on the movie, I wanted to extend it as long as possible. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, he said, well, just get hit on the back of the head and fall down. <laughs> no, that's boring. And this is the beginning, the real beginning of this movie. What happens next? And so I said, no, 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 no. If he hits me like this, I've got to twist my body, and then he said, you spit out blood, and then I said, okay, then I do this, and he said, then you clap your feet on the, the ramp, and so that we worked together on it, and I think we made something special, you know, for, to, to start that death march in the movie. So anyway, and then Gunner was all pumped. They hadn't let us see each other. So it was the first time I saw Leatherface. And he was so pumped. I think it was his first thing he did. And I came in and we talked about it. Talked about it. But we came to doing it. And you have to understand, we didn't have, it wasn't a Stanley Cooper movie. We didn't have 50, 60 takes. We were doing this in a couple of takes, which is pretty damn good. But anyway, we uh, got our positions and action and we went up there and this was a very soft rubber hand. Yeah, made my heart hurt. And Gunner came down so hard. He burst all the blood vessels in the eye. And he would have cost him so hard. And I twisted, and I spit, and I clapped my feet. I did out all that, everything I was craving to do. And he picked me up like a rag dog. <laughs> he just flipped me into this little bitty room, which was not very big at all. And I crashed into the wall and just tried to get as small as I possible. <laughs> and he closed the door. <laughs> My favorite first memory of the film is the twin waitresses that work at Denny's and I told them I was going to be in a movie. Okay, okay. My first important memory of the movie is we were sloshing back to the University of Texas drama department where I was a lesbian, a thespian. <laughs> And uh, we had not learned our lines for actor class. And I said, well, we'll just have some of the slick good memory, and we'll make the stuff up. <laughs> so uh, we were going to go back and just improvise uh, some of the Shakespeare we were supposed to be doing. Good luck with that. And so we were going up the steps to the drama department, and the little girl runs out, and she goes, are you going to audition for the movie? <laughs> movie? We're not going to be in a film with you're a serious actor doing Shakespeare on me. <laughs> and she goes, okay, uh, uh, what's it about? She goes, oh, it's a horror movie. I'm like, oh, so I said, come on, let's go wind these suckers up. So we slosh into the little audition room where Toby's waiting ashes and we little things with the dark. So he looks at me and he says, Ah, can you be weary? <laughs> <laughs> My friends go to the floor. <laughs> and you got your guy. <laughs> Thank you. So I thought, what can I do to wind this guy up? I know. I have a, 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 for real, in real life, a paranoid schizophrenic nephew who does all that stuff. I said, and I'll do, I'll do him, and I'll do Strother Martin. And uh, what we've got here, a family, I'll do him. Yeah. And, and that's so I started doing all this weird stuff. Toby is backing away from me. <laughs> 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 With this look in his eye, like, what have I done? <laughs> four days, I said, got rid of him. Four days later, this esteemed gentleman brings me a contract and said, uh, 
we need you for the film. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not like anybody's ever going to see it. <laughs> Thank you so 
much for coming out. Yeah. Uh, I, a couple things I want to say. That, but my first day there, uh, and I'd been on a red eye from Chicago. That's how you pronounce the word. Well, the A-H on you. It's not Chicago, Chicago. Uh, I got up at 6.30 in the morning and he picked me up at the airport. Austin. And he goes, now, uh, they're, they're, they're fixing the shoot. Do you want to go up to the location or do you want to go home and, and you know, get some sleep? And I said, no, I don't know. You know that was a 20-year-old theater actor and I was making my first, you know, feature film. So, you know, I'd done a little, uh, like, uh, some training films for insurance stuff, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, really great stuff. <laughs> and uh, I said, no, 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 I want to go out. I want to see what it's all about, you know. So we go out there. And, uh, and they're starting to work, and the, the crew is setting up a dolly, setting up a bunch of dolly track and doing all this stuff. I was just fascinated with it. And, uh, and Paul Partain. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Paul had this huge 1967 cat black convertible white with red leather interior, you know, and he's got it out there. And it's the kind that had, I don't know if it was a 67, for some reason that still so much did, but it had fins on it about that long that, you know, come up like that, like if you were riding a bicycle behind it, the guy hit the brakes, you were a dead man. <laughs> And he's got this semi-circle of lawn chairs set up around. And he's sitting in the you know, front and center in his wheelchair. Sitting there. Waiting to have all the meetings have this conversation though. <laughs> the rest of the cast is all sitting on film equipment shit over there. Paul's on the phone. And hey partner, you know, I'm like, hey, you know. He says, what are you doing here? And I, said, I told him that, you know, I was not playing grandpa and I just got there to go, well, side along over here, partner, sit down. He was a real homey kind of guy. And he had the, the trunk coat on his cap like, grab yourself something to drink. And he had this huge cooler, like the size of a construction site. <laughs> he was, as you know, it was all filled with big bottles of Coca-Cola and uh, 60 ounce cans of Budweiser. Gave <laughs> <laughs> himself a drink and I thought, well, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere, so it's like seven o'clock in the morning and I grab him. <laughs> and these guys can tell you. So it's not unlike me. I grab a can of Budweiser and sit, <laughs> sit down, <laughs> you know. And uh, I meet with fellow one of this guy. It's, but at the time I did not realize that nobody could stand it. <laughs> Because he never dropped her, you know. But to watch him act, he was such an inspiration to me. To watch him act, you know, he was uh, just terrific in that role. And, and a shout out to Kim Hankel. Part of the genius of Kim Hankel is he is the only screenwriter in history to have ever made the handicapped guy fucking obnoxious. <laughs> 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 and, and then also the very memorable Ed can tell you in a second uh, the dinner party scene which uh, we did forever never, 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 ever <laughs> and, and I must say Bill for you to say that you know we did more did do more than a couple of takes is absolute fucking bullshit <laughs> Watching good actors work, I, I've continued on to do sound 
and the music and the films and it's still doing that so this was my career. Um, and when you're doing dramatics, I do a lot of documentaries, but when you're doing dramatics, some of the most enjoyable things to watch good actors work. Just get out of the way and watch them do their thing. And Paul Partain was indeed really good and it it actually takes skill to be obnoxious. <laughs> and so, for those of you, it, Paul is the guy, the Blair Witch Project took advantage of this idea some years later. You know, the meat, the people are going to kill off, the first, first to be eaten is my friend Sonny Carl Davis calls it. Uh, it's good to make this body you don't like. You know, people, nobody really got that idea until Kim and Toby wrote that. Paul did a great job of doing that. And you will see a scene at the gas station where uh, Franklin in his wheelchair can't get out. Uh, everybody else has left. And they just had a very disturbing scene that you were, for those of you who haven't seen it, you can figure that out. And he was marveling at how bizarre this just was. And Toby's, Toby had two, two great skills in filmmaking. He was a good editor. And I don't think people give him enough credit for that. Um, because you, as I was telling somebody earlier, you shoot the movie on location, but you make the movie in editing. And Toby had a great skill at that. Um, but he was also a very good documentary, verite, handheld camera person. He learned how to do that in a smart way, which is why he was sought out for a number of films, his visibility. And he was also short, so they gave him a, a wonderful angle. Seriously, he had a very fluid stock. So, uh, in some scenes, Toby wanted to shoot himself, especially if it was a friend thing. So, me with the microphone, and Toby with the camera, we in there with Paul, and nobody else is in there. It's just, it's like we're having this private moment of watching Paul do his work. And and he brought it, you know, the camera's close, so when the camera's close as an actor, you need to bring it down and not, not you know, be the theater thespian. You, you push it just as far as you've got to push it to get into the lens. And he would, he just nailed it the first time. It was, uh, okay, cut, one take only. And both of us, Toby and I just looked at each other and said, man, we just saw something. So that's, in filmmaking, watching good actors work is, is one of the delights. And that's why this is great fun. And speaking of which, I would like to introduce one of the best actors that was in the movie. Here's Terry. And you know, I think 
think we did it three or four or five times. <laughs> Which was one of the fewer times of all. I mean, you know, Toby would have 32 angles at the staircase when Gunner is screaming. You know, that went on from 8 in the morning till 8 at night. This, I think, was like 4 or 5. And I was just very, what is he thinking? <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So I go to see the movie, and you know I was so worried about my cheeks and the red shorts. And, uh, <laughs> Come on, Terry, we're gonna shoot around it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like so worried. I'm a serious actress. <laughs> And so I'm sitting with 500 screaming kids in a matinee in Tomball, Texas. <laughs> and what I'm really worried about is that, you know, scene with the shorts <laughs> when she's walking up. So I don't hold my eyes like this because of leather face. I hold them because my cheeks are in cinema screaming. <laughs>